very special evening tonight. Uh, and you'll be introduced to our two speakers for the evening. But before we do that, I've put together a few slides. Maybe, John, you can just help me bring these up. Um, just to give you an idea of the kinds of issues we're going to talk about. Remember last week I did a whole mess of slides, um, and we'll introduce a few each week. So I just want to do this very quickly so we can get on with the rest of the program. Uh, but just to give you, first of all, some recent data, because we're also going to do a little current events at the beginning of most sessions. We just got the latest um, employment and unemployment numbers, and you'll see how rapidly uh, the employment situation is deteriorated, um, peaking at about 138 million Americans at work last December, uh, about the same time that NBAR, as you heard last week, declared the beginning of the recession. And we're down to about 135 and a half million uh, as of the latest numbers for December, which were released uh, the first Friday of this month. So we've lost about 2.6 million jobs in a single year. That is a very, very rapid decline. Um, you can also see where it was in terms of individual sectors. Uh, within the last year, we've seen an 8.5% decline in construction, 5.7% decline in manufacturing, as you see a little a decline in retail trade and financial services. But look at what has happened to temporary services a loss of half a million jobs, or about one in five temp jobs, has disappeared in a single calendar year. That's a pretty amazing statistic. Um, if you look at it in terms of the total number of people who are officially unemployed, according to the Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics, you can see that back in uh, 2000, uh, we had gotten down just before the 2000-2001 recession to about 5.5 million people unemployed. We then saw through 2001-2002, the last recession before the current one, we got up to about 9.2 million people unemployed out of a labor force of about 128 million. It then declined uh, fairly steadily through uh, middle of 2006. And then you can see what's happened, and particularly just look at the last few months where this thing has taken off through the roof. 11 million people unemployed. Um, the unemployment rates um, are up. I don't think you can quite see it. It was, for some reason, on this slide got covered. But it's up to 7.2%, which was the latest unemployment rate. Um, one of the other things that Professor Minahan pointed out last week was that that is only the official number of unemployed. But there are other kinds of workers who are what we call <coughs> underutilized in the workforce, including those who are discouraged. People who are no longer counted as, un as unemployed because they've given up looking for work. And if you don't actively look for work, you can't be counted as unemployed. Even though you may have looked for 20 or 30 weeks and then finally gave up in your neighborhood or your, your region. Um, so you'll see back in 2007, we had an official unemployment rate of 4.8%. The Department of Labor actually keeps track of discouraged workers, and there was another 8 tenths of 1% formally counted as discouraged. Uh, why aren't you looking for work? Answer, I've given up. I'd like a job, but there are none that I qualify for. And then there's another 3.1% back in 2007 who are involuntarily part-time. These are people who would like to have full-time jobs, but can't find them. So they may have, in fact, been working in a full-time job on a Ford assembly line, uh, and they're now working part-time at Walmart or McDonald's. A year later, 2008, you'll see that the unemployment rate has gone from 4.8% in December of 2007 to 7.2%, the number we just saw. Discouraged workers have gone from 8 tenths of a percent to 1.1 percent. And look at the very large increase in the part-time, involuntary part-time. So that the overall official, these are actually BLS numbers, not mine, Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers, suggest about a 13.5 percent underutilization of labor. So about one in seven workers is unemployed, discouraged, or part-time involuntarily. Well, tonight, we're going to talk about what makes economies grow, short run and long run. And 
I put together this um, set of statistics actually for a book I wrote back in 2000 with the late Ben Harrison, a book called Growing Prosperity, The Battle for Growth with Equity in the 21st Century. And using data from a number of uh, economic historians, uh, as well as the Council of Economic Advisors, I actually put together a chart which shows you what most people think were, or at least most professionals thought, were the growth rates going back to the year 1800. So just a few years after the founding of the Republic in 1787. And you'll see that during the period of time, if you look all the way over here on, the, on your left side, that um, growth rates were fairly strong. This is the in beginnings of the Industrial Revolution. We go right through the Civil War. Uh, between 1840 and 1870, the best numbers we have showed an extraordinary growth rate of 5.1%. Again, this is the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And then you see it decline, but still very healthy growth rates, until 1929. And during the Great Depression, for a whole decade, we essentially had no growth. By 1939, we had gotten back to real GDP numbers, at least as well as we could assess them back then, before we had really good statistics, uh, that showed we took a, taken a whole decade, seven or eight years, to recover from the first three years of the Depression. And then World War II, boom, we're back at 4.5% growth rates per year, 3.9% during the 50s, 4.4% during the booming 60s, and then you'll see 3.2, 3.0, 2 .3. In fact, by the early 1990s, there were books coming out from people like Paul Krugman, um, who just won the Nobel Prize in Economics for 2008, um, writing books uh, suggesting that growth rates of much more than 2 to 2.5% two were not going to occur again. And there are a whole lot of reasons why people talk, why people talk that way. Um, as a matter of fact, however, we did have a recovery uh, during the late 1990s, the second kind of Clinton administration, in which we got back to nearly 4% growth rate. And you can see here, 1959 to 1969, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the first half of the 1990s, then we had this rather remarkable recovery of growth up to about 4%. Um, I was involved at that time uh, in the early, uh, mid-1990s in a wonderful long debate with uh, Princeton economist Alan Blinder in which we were asking, is there a speed limit? And how high is the speed limit? And many people were suggesting, indeed, the speed limit of the economy was only 2.3%. And my colleague, ben, ben Harris, and I were saying, oh, I'll bet you we could hit 3. And we hit 3.9. And then we're back to about 2.4. And then if you want to look at um, kind of the last four years, again, as Professor Minahan suggested, if you had been very, very perceptive, you could have seen troubles brewing back some years ago. Uh, not only in financial services, but in the real economy. Here you see growth rates from 3.6, 3.1, 2.9, 2.2, .2, .2, virtually nothing in the first quarter of 08, and the estimate for now 2009 uh, is somewhere in the neighborhood of a half to 1% loss. So what we want to talk about tonight is what determines the rate of economic growth in any economy? over the long run, and also we might get into talking about just kind of fluctuations in the growth rate. And we have two just absolutely extraordinary people to introduce that subject to us, and Professor Manhan will do the honors. This is going to be a very quick handoff. Uh, John suggested um, that we might try carpooling. Tonight I had the most incredible carpool partner in the form of the 1987 Nobel Prize winner in economics, mm -hmm. Professor Bob Solo, Professor Emer Emeritus at MIT. He actually survived riding with me all the way from Lewis Wharf over here, and he may be able to get back in the car in the parking lot, and he may not be, uh, in that it got a little wedged in. But anyway, he's going to be our first speaker uh, on economic growth, uh, our second speaker, uh, Lynn Brown is an executive VP uh, at the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. And Lynn um, has the distinction of being the um, eminence behind the New England Economic Museum, the New England Economic Adventure, as we used to call it. Uh, 
which really tries to tell the stories of why economics, why economies grow, uh, using um, stories from New England. Uh, so we're very, very fortunate to have these two speakers tonight. Let me turn the platform over to uh, Professor Sobel.